we will be having next another person who served in the U.S. military. Uh, Julio Torres was a staff sergeant in the U.S. Army. Uh, ethnically Puerto Rican, he was born and raised in New York City, New York. Uh, he was in the Army for 11 years, six uh, on active duty and five in the reserves. And from January to December 2010, he was in Iraq as an intelligence analyst, doing for the most part research and analytical um, work. He has a bachelor's in global history and is working on his master's in divinity at Union Theological Seminary in New York. Julio. Thank you. I'm also with the Cairo Center for Rice, Religion, and Social Justice, and they're working on the New Poor People's Campaign. But also, I'm with Iraq Veterans Against the War. And uh, so, when I first joined the Army in 2005, they put me in the Hilton Hotel overnight. And in the morning during breakfast, there was one fellow recruit who was rejoining the Army after an injury in Iraq, he was having a discussion about waterboarding, torture, and shooting first and asking questions later. And in my youth, I said, my country is righteous, fighting the evil of terrorism, and more importantly, not allowing the weapons of mass destruction in the hands of someone like Saddam Hussein. We must do what is necessary. I was fearful that a bomb could be used against America. The devastation with 9-11 and recent high school history lessons on the atomic bomb and the devastation of Hiroshima and Nagasaki were fresh in my mind. And so in, the, in this respect, the war had impacted my upbringing and worldview, because much like during the Cold War, I feared that terrorists would attack anywhere, anytime. When I found out the lies about the weapons of mass destruction, I contemplated jumping off a tall building. My sense of purpose was destroyed, and what I thought I worked for turned out to be a lie. I went from fighting against evil to realizing that I was on the wrong side. My emotional, mental, and spiritual well-being were all impacted by this. And I know in this I'm not alone, because half of the married couples I knew in the military were divorced. I knew 40 homeless veterans, and I've seen 60 with alcohol or drug problems. And self-medication, cheaper than therapy, especially because you can drink in your off time. If you're lucky enough to make it to one of the anonymous groups, you'll still end up being with the stigma of being weak, not being productive, and being a substance abuser who lacks discipline. It's better to have a drink with your buddy, but every year I hear of two or more veterans who have committed suicide. And so every year I had to train two or more suicide prevention trainings. And so both before and after my deployment, I personally was beset by nightmares, irritability, and anger issues. The war created a real element of fear. Now, something that all religions promote is a healthy spirituality consisting of hope, meaning, and purpose. Yet Iraq and the military transformed that hope into fear, specifically a heightened fear of death. The trash can be explosives, that anyone in loose clothing could be hiding a weapon. Fear that anyone, specifically Arabs and Muslims, could potentially be your enemy. And I remember talking to a Muslim chaplain who was from New, York, New Jersey, who worked for the New York police for years. He held a middle to high rank. And he told me that when he went to represent the NYPD in the 9-11 ceremony as a chaplain, he was threatened by the Secret Service agents there. Now this fear is just one cost of the war. It has also cost me my patriotism, my joy, my pride, my youth, my adult formation, my emotional growth, my humanity. In my years of active duty, I witnessed a five-fold increase of intelligence personnel on the enlisted side. There were also many more contractors who cost more money. You could have funded three or more junior enlisted military for every contractor who was brought on. And those were jobs that I knew a lot of people would have wanted, despite the cost. Yet every time I came back home, I saw more and more homeless people. Meanwhile, the general, at one point, 2008, 2009, had put a million dollars towards a tent that was supposed to fill with air and make it resilient to munitions that would bounce off it, kind of like a, a bouncing castle the kids use. And the thing collapsed all the time, it was worthless. And the reality is, in the neighborhood I grew up in, people were poor. No one could go to college without going into debt. And I cannot say I was familiar with the situation of those who were of Southwest or South Asian descent, for example, Arabs or Indians. But Islamophobia knows no bounds. They all suffered because they were just brown skin color. There were not many Protestant white people, if any, that I knew from my part of Queens. 
but although I met many in the Army who were escaping from poverty or repaying college loan debts. And some joined for patriotic reasons as well as the future job opportunities, maybe contracting jobs. I knew 10 people from my high school graduating class of about 500 kids. They were black, Latino, and East Asian who joined the military to pay for college, myself included. There may have been more, and we became indentured servants in a way, unable to just get a job out of high school that was even barely minimum wage, which at the time was about five to six bucks an hour. And even in my house and a few other people, we had situations similar where we had myself and two brothers, my parents, and my grandparent or my nephew at one point, we all shared a two-bedroom apartment. And like I said, this wasn't uncommon. We had to take care of the elderly in our family because the other option of senior homes was just too expensive. And while my dad has had an excellent job at all my life, he was not able to help us uh, go to college. He couldn't afford it. And my mother had a part-time job, but was also a full-time mother. But still, I had to join the military for the college money. Patriotism and a sense of duty were certainly there, but I needed a job. I needed the college money. I needed health care. I needed food and water. I had to contract myself to the Army and this was supposedly more than a job. It was a service, a duty to our country. Even though I needed to take care of myself, I had bought into this pitch, this lie, that the glory and American exceptionalism, the idea of service in the military. And I experienced deep feelings of betrayal when I found out about the lies of weapons of mass destruction. And we call this moral injury, with symptoms similar to PTSD. And meanwhile, in the military, there are two contradicting cultures. There's one strain that says, do it yourself, be tough, do what you can before you ask for help. And there's another strain that says to go seek help. And then there are stigmas that those seeking help used to face. While they've decreased in years, you know, we hear about people being deployed multiple times to Iraq, and we see shame tactics of the Army, which says that we can keep going even when it's hard and we're hurting. The culture that carries through every part of being in the military and even continues when you're outside of the military. Of working 14 hour days, seven days a week, maybe two weeks off in the war zone. You get married, you get divorced, you raise kids, you try to stay in shape, you try to get an education, you try to get promoted. There's this whole culture of toughness that measures how much you have suffered. And the more you suffered, the greater you were, with more honor, with more glory a true testament to the loyalty of the nation. And when we leave the military, that suffering becomes our way of life in the civilian world. And it's playing a game of chicken with your whole life, waiting to see how much suffering you can tolerate before it becomes an emergency. People thank us for our service. We all had this inner suffering. But what they're thanking for is, is the pain. We are heroes because of this pain. And it's difficult for me to say. And so finally, I want to say that IVAW had their own tribunal, the Winter Soldier in 2008. The clip is going to be shown. Thank you.